You're listening to Clyde's Favorite Old Time Radio, a podcast of the various genres of old time radio, science fiction, comedy, mystery, horror, and historical broadcasts. Hello, MPIR listener. This is Clyde J. Kale. Thank you so much for listening to Mystery Play Internet Radio. In these trying times, since most of us are locked up in our homes, I, as a podcaster and as the operator of Mystery Play Internet Radio, want to continue to provide some outstanding entertainment of old-time radio. Please, if you have enjoyed the programming that Mystery Play Internet Radio provides, consider sending in a donation via PayPal. Go to www.mpir-otr.com and on the side menu, select the donations page. Again, that's www.mpir-otr.com and select the donation page. A donation of any amount will be greatly appreciated. You know, that extra $5 or $10 really adds up. And I want to continue broadcasting Old Time Radio and continue to bring these outstanding shows to you, maybe to help ease your mind during this crisis that we are all in together. Again, thank you so much for listening to Mystery Play Internet Radio. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Tom Wilkins at Global Casualty, Johnny. Oh, hi, Tom. How are you doing? Lousy. Right now, I've got one big headache. A $100,000 headache. Try an ice bag and go back to bed. A bag of ice would cure me, all right, but not the kind of ice you're thinking of. Hmm? 100000 bucks worth of uncut diamonds, Johnny. They've been stolen, and we wrote the policy on them. 100000 That's a fat lot of rocks, Tom. And a fat fee if you can recover them for us. You interested? Oh, that's the understatement of the week. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the home office, Global Casualty, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenditures during my investigation of the picture postcard matter. Expense account item one, a dollar and a quarter. Taxi to the office of Global Casualty, where Tom Wilkins was waiting for me. Well, looks like we're bucking a pretty well-organized outfit in this deal, Johnny. The way they pulled the job shows they'd planned it out pretty well. How did it happen, Tom, and where? The diamonds were being taken by special courier from Zurich, Switzerland to Amsterdam. They got lifted at the Zurich airport. How? The airport was crowded. The courier was carrying the diamonds in a leather briefcase strapped to his wrist. A fight broke out suddenly. In the confusion, the courier was slugged and the case cut loose from him. After which the fight suddenly stopped, huh? Yeah. It was obviously a rigged brawl. By the time the police arrived, the people involved had disappeared. With the uncut diamonds. Mm -hmm. Sounds like their timing was pretty good. Too good. How about the courier? You get a look at the guy who slugged him? No, it happened from behind. Anybody in the airport crowd able to describe the guys who'd rigged the brawl? Well, no clear description. Somebody mentioned that one of the men involved was stocky, sort of a bull neck. Oh, great. Probably only a couple of million people answering that description. True. Zurich police turn up anything? Not a thing. Well, look, Tom, I'm an insurance investigator, not a magician. You better get yourself another boy. Whoa, Johnny. We got one lead, and it could be enough if it's on the level. Oh, well, let's have it. The robbery was day before yesterday. This morning, I got an airmail special delivery letter from Zurich. Here, take a look. Uh -huh. Regarding the recent diamond matter, I have information which may enable you to recover them. For a reward. So I see. And he wants to talk to somebody about it. Yeah, and I nominate you. It's signed Sebastian. Any idea who he is? None at all. As you see, I was to reply to general delivery in Zurich. I did. Told him you were the one. Uh-huh. How do I find him? Well, read on. You're to register at the Polo Hotel in Zurich. He or she will contact you there. 
You think it's on the level? I don't know. Could be a phony. Somebody trying to ace in and promote a fast buck. It's happened before. Sure, and this could be another one. But right now, it's the only lead we've got. We've got to take a chance and go along with it. I can't say I care for the postscript here. Extreme caution necessary. Leads me to think there's one thing you'd better be real sure about, Johnny. What's that? That you don't get contacted by the wrong guy. And so, with the sun sinking slowly in the west and my morale slowly following suit, I said goodbye to my cheerful friend and set sail for distant shores. Item two, $622, plane fare and incidentals to Zurich, Switzerland. It was a quiet, uneventful flight, and I had a lot of time to think. But I didn't much like what I was thinking. Whoever had lifted the uncut stones wouldn't exactly like the idea of an informant spilling the beans to me. And I had a slight hunch I'd be lucky if beans were the only thing that got spilled. My plane landed at Zurich in the late afternoon. I hired a cab, that's item three, one dollar, to take me to the Polo Hotel. The city looked bright, fresh, and clean. It gave me a lift. And the sight of a very pretty girl walking quickly to my cab as we were ready to pull away from the airport didn't hurt either. Oh, darling, I... Well, oh. hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'd made a mistake. Darn it. I thought you but were... That was somebody else. Yeah, that's the trouble with having an ordinary-looking face. Well, I wouldn't call it ordinary, but, but please... Well... Please, I, I wonder, could I share your cab into the city? Oh, by all means. I guess my friend was not on that plane after all. Oh, that's rough. Okay, driver. Oh, this is very good of you. Well, I'm a real prince when you get to know me, Miss... Schaefer. Ilsa Schaefer. Johnny Dollar. And speaking of getting to know me... Driver, please, pull up. Well, hey, how come? Oh, I am so sorry, Mr. Dollar. I just remembered something I have to do. We were just beginning to get acquainted. I know. A pity, isn't it? Well, look, wait, don't... Well, perhaps this will make up for it. Well, offhand, I can't think of a better start. Now, if you'll only... Goodbye. Hey, Ilsa, wait. Hmm. Well, if this is the customary Swiss hospitality driver, sign me up. Then I realized that Ilsa had forgotten her purse. I had the driver cruise around a few minutes, but we didn't see her anywhere. So I dropped her purse off at the lost and found office of the taxi cab company, then went on to the Polo Hotel. It was in the newer quarter of Zurich, on the lower slopes of the Zurichberg. I went inside and started for the desk in the lobby, but I didn't quite make it. Turn here, please. Sorry, I'm heading for the desk. I said turn here, please. You know, I can't say I care for the way you keep nudging me in the ribs. That wouldn't be a gun, would it? Yes, it would. Now, if you will, please come with me. Okay, mister. Where to? To the side entrance. I'll say one thing. I sure didn't expect all the reception committees. The first one I like much better. Huh? Skip it, will you? Outside. That car over there. Hey, look, isn't it about time you tell me what this is all about? There's no use pretending you do not know. The diamonds. Oh. You think I've got them, maybe? I do not think. I'm sure of it. Well, this may come as a nasty surprise to you, mister, but I... I have no time to waste. She entered your cab with a purse. She? And... Ilsa? And left without it. And she was, uh, shall we say, very friendly to you. Oh, that I remember. And I have no complaints, believe me, but she didn't give me any diamonds. I warn you. They weren't in her purse, either. They checked the contents at Lost and Found. Get into the car. Hey, look, this routine won't get you anywhere. Into the car. Hey, take it easy, friend. You're trying to poke a hole in my ribs. Okay, okay, relax. Take it into the car. I jerked the door open suddenly to knock him off balance. I swung at him, but he ducked and lunged at me. I went sprawling into the street in front of an oncoming car. The fenders hit me a glancing blow and I bounced against the curb. By the time I could get to my feet again, my friend with a gun had disappeared and so had his car. I wasn't hurt, but it took several minutes to convince the very scared cab driver who'd accidentally hit me. He should be scared. Expense account item four, twelve dollars and seventy-five cents. Telephone call to Tom Wilkins at Global Casualty Bank in the States. 
I'm glad you called, Johnny. Uh, any luck so far? No luck, but sure a lot of action. Well, what do you mean? Well, first off, an attractive little doll shares my cab for a few blocks, plants a kiss on me, and scrambles out, leaving her purse behind. What? Then a strong arm collars me and tells me the girl must have passed the diamonds to me in the cab. Oh, but that doesn't make sense. Well, anyway, that's what happened so far. Plus, my almost getting run over in the process. Look. Johnny, I knew this wouldn't be an easy assignment, but... Uh... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Don't worry, Tom. I'm still all in one piece. But I'm beginning to realize what Sebastian meant in his letter about extreme caution being necessary. Has anyone contacted you yet? No, only the aforementioned pair. No sign of this Sebastian, whoever he or she is. Well, I still don't understand Neither why... Neither do I. Either the boys who stole the diamonds have lost them, or there's another outfit trying to get their hands on them. In which case, I'm right in the middle. Johnny, Sebastian's still our only lead. You've got to give him plenty of chance to contact you. Yeah, I know. we Will do. But be careful. Look, I'm with you, believe me. I went up to my room and stretched out on the bed to wait. Two hours went by. Nothing happened. Finally, I went down to the lobby. Expense account item 5, 30 cents, two English language newspapers. I settled down in the most conspicuous chair I could find and waited some more. Still nothing. I worked my way through the newspaper slowly. Then, finally, somebody came over to the chair that was back to back with mine. I took a quick look. He was well-dressed, dark wavy hair, medium height. But he paid no attention to me and started reading his newspaper. Looked like a wrong guess. Maybe I'd have to wait until tomorrow. So I started to get up. Mr. Dollar. Mm, what? Please. Put your newspaper in front of your face and do not turn around. Okay. Who are you? Sebastian, who wrote the letter to your company in the United States. Oh? It must not appear we are talking to each other. Somebody watching us? I would not doubt it. So you want to talk about the robbery of those uncut diamonds? How do I know you have any real information? I will give you proof presently. But first, let us talk about the reward. What is the amount? Depends on how good the information is, Sebastian. I am talking about the diamonds. Oh? Suppose I were to tell you that I was in a position to guarantee their return. Go on. For $25,000 and no further investigation, I will arrange for the return of the diamonds. I'd have to have proof that you know what you're talking about. Of course. Let me see. My back is to you. Is it your right hand which is closest to the wall and shielded from the lobby? Yeah. Put it down beside your chair. Do not take the newspaper away from your face. Okay. Here. A picture postcard. Yes. Addressed to me, as you see. The writing's in German. What does it mean? It is the equivalent of your American expression, having wonderful time, wish you were here. Signed by F. Gruner. Who's he or she? A friend. Look at the picture on the other side. The Kleibach Inn? Yes. An inn in the town of Kleibach in the Alps, several hours from here. Hey, wait a minute. Are the diamonds at the Kleibach Inn? No. But this postcard is part of the key to their location. Part of the key? Oh, now, look, Sebastian. This just isn't good enough. Shh, I can't... Shh. Someone is coming. I cannot talk further with you here. It is not safe. Oh, look, Do not you? worry. I will furnish all the proof you need. When? Tonight. Now listen carefully. I am going. I will leave my newspaper on the floor beside my chair. Wait a few minutes, then get up. Drop your paper, and when you pick it up, pick up mine also. Then what? On an inner page of my paper, I have written my address. Come there in two hours. If I am not there, wait for me. Now, just a minute. How can I... Please. There is no time for further questions. Two hours, Mr. Dollar, in my room. Two hours later, I went to the address he'd given me. A small apartment in another part of the city. No answer. He hadn't arrived yet. I went inside and waited. Fifteen minutes went by. No sign of Sebastian. And then something started pecking away at my brain, a faint sound. I finally pegged it, a dripping faucet. It came from the bathroom. The bathtub was full. 
In it, floating face down, was Sebastian. Johnny Dollar. Inspector Herniger of the Zurich Police, Herr Dollar. Oh, yeah, Inspector. I talked to one of your men last night. Yeah, when you report the murder of this man called Sebastian. Yeah, any line on this killer? Not as yet. We are somewhat at a loss as to motive. That I think I can supply. So? Sebastian apparently had information about the robbery of some uncut diamonds here in Zurich. So? Yeah, and he was willing to sell his information. But somebody called off the sale permanently. So find the man who lifted the stones and we'll have Sebastian's killer. Perhaps. You don't sound convinced. It appears quite possible, Herr Dollar, that Sebastian was killed by a woman. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Global Casualty, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Location, Zurich, Switzerland. Expense account continued. Item six, one dollar even, cab fare from the Polo Hotel to police headquarters. Inspector Herniger was a big man who moved and talked slowly. But one look at his very cold, slate-gray eyes told you his brain was moving a lot faster. Herr Dollar, I believe you told my lieutenant last evening that you were an insurance investigator. That's right, Inspector. And that you are in Zurich to investigate loss of a hundred thousand American dollars in diamonds at the airport a few days ago. Right. Well, uh... Perhaps you had better supply me with such background as you may have. Gladly. The robbery itself, of course, you know about. A fight broke out at the airport. We know that it was, as you say, rigged to create confusion. Yeah, and in the confusion, the courier who was carrying the stones was slugged. His briefcase was cut away from his wrist. Whereupon the assailants quickly melted away into the crowd. The exactness of their timing suggests that they were well organized and had planned the robbery in some detail. The next day, the company I'm representing got a letter from this man, Sebastian. He claimed to have information on the robbery and would help us recover the stones for a price. And you were sent to contact this Sebastian? Yeah. Or rather, I was sent here so that Sebastian could contact me. And did he? He did. But as it turned out, he practically had to stand in line. I am afraid I do not follow you. Well... First off, a very attractive young lady popped into my cab as I was leaving the airport for the hotel. I asked to share the cab. Oh? Two blocks later, she had the driver stop, planted a kiss on me, and jumped out. Indeed. You Americans seem to work fast, Herr Dollar. Yeah, I'm afraid I can't chalk up the incident to my personal charm, Inspector. She left her purse in the cab, and I gather the idea was to make somebody else think she'd pass the diamonds to me. And who would this somebody else be? A guy who jumped me in the lobby of the Polar Hotel. He was pretty convinced I had the stones. Mm. And how would the dead man Sebastian fit in? Well, it's my hunch. Sebastian was a member of the outfit who stole them in the first place. He could have been trying to play both ends against the middle. How do you arrive at that conclusion? Well, look, we know there were several members of the group. Okay, so they're bound to take a big loss when they fence the diamonds. They'd be lucky to get half the value, which would be 50000 True. Split three or four ways, that would cut the shares down considerably. But... If Sebastian could engineer the return of the stones and collect a $25,000 reward for it, he'd be way ahead of the game. And Sebastian was secretly negotiating with you. Yeah, behind a newspaper in the hotel lobby. He wanted me to meet him in his room later so he could talk. I went there. I found him in the bathtub dead. And he had given you no specific information as to the location of the diamonds? Only this, Inspector. A picture postcard? Uh Uh-huh. The Kleibach Inn. He told me Kleibach was a small resort village up in the Alps. I know the place. Uh, the card is addressed to Sebastian and signed by F. Gruner. He said Gruner was a friend of his. Perhaps the diamonds are at the Kleibach Inn. He said no, that this card was only part of the key to finding them. And he gave you no indication as to what the rest of the key to their location was. No, no, none at all. I gather that's what we were going to talk about in his room later. But somebody else apparently had different ideas. Yeah. Say, look... You you said over the phone that Sebastian's killer could have been a woman. Well, he was struck on the head from behind, but only hard enough to stun him. His death was due to drowning in the bathtub. Many times in our experience, women have chosen such a method. The woman, then, could be Ilsa. Yeah. 
Or perhaps one of Sebastian's gang who learned of his plans. Very annoying, Herr Dollar. Many possibilities. But nothing tangible. Well, I'm heading for that place on the postcard, Inspector. The Kleibach Inn? Yeah. At this point, part of a key is better than none. Expense account item 7, $16.20 American. Transportation and incidentals to the Kleibach Inn. The postcard didn't do justice to the place. The village nestled in a little meadow below some towering peaks. Oh, above it was the inn, a chalet-type building that looked out over the valley. And it was a peaceful scene. A few cows in the meadow with jangling bells. A lot of snow on the peaks. A sky of startlingly clear blue and a few wisps of clouds nudging the peaks. Inside, the inn looked spacious and comfortable with a friendly fire crackling in the huge fireplace and a friendly-looking fellow behind the desk. Welcome to the Kleibach Inn. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, please sign here. Okay. Thank you, Herr Dollar, is it? Yeah. You the manager? Yeah, I am Otto Friedrich, your host. Well, maybe you could help me, Otto. I am at your service. All right. Take a look at this postcard. Oh, what's the matter? That is not the good picture of the inn. I had some new ones made. You see, the lighting is wrong in this picture. The entire north wing is in the shadows. Now, in the good picture... Yeah, then... yeah. Well, what I want to know is, uh, do you sell these cards here? Not those cards, no. I have the new cards. See, here is one. Now, see how much better... Well, how about in the village? Do they sell the old cards there? <sighs> yeah, I'm afraid so, in one or two shops. I have told them a hundred times I will give them the new ones if only yeah. they will. You see, it's... Yes, a... it's the lighting. You ever hear the name Sebastian around here? Sebastian. Sebastian, Sebastian. No need to memorize it. Just tell me if you've heard it, please. Is it a first name or a last name? There you've got me. Sebastian. No, I do not remember hearing that name. I'll be glad to check my eye. Just a photo. How uh, how about F. Gruner? He's the one who sent the car to Sebastian. Gruner. 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 Perhaps I heard the name in the village somewhere. I will see what I can find out. Okay, thanks. In the meantime, I hope you'll be comfortable here and enjoy your visit. Ski equipment is at your disposal. Thanks. But I'll enjoy my visit a lot more if I can find F. Gruner. Okay, okay, coming. Oh, I say, I, I'm looking for a chap named Dollar who's supposed to be occupying this room. I'm Johnny Dollar. You? Are you certain? Reasonably, why? Oh, what a pity. Well, I'm sorry, old man, but there's not very much I can do about it. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I, I, I say, you must forgive me. Must I? Well, I mean, well, you see, I used to know a chap in London named Dollar. Delightful fellow, really. Uh, incidentally, I'm Jeffrey Harris. Oh, we had ripping times together. How jolly for you. Yeah, and when I heard that a chap named Dollar had registered here at the inn, well, naturally, I thought it must be old Bunny. Bunny? Yes, old Bunny Dollar. Oh, Bunny was just a dick nickname, you see. Well, that's reassuring, Harris. You know, there is a bit of a resemblance... You wouldn't mind a chance to be his brother or cousin, would you? No, no. Well, after all, Dollar's a bit of an odd name, and I don't No, I'm to... sorry. If you'll excuse me, I'm on my way downstairs. Oh, splendid. Well, so am I. Oh? <laughs> it's quite a coincidence, is it? Is it? Well, running to you in this way, I mean, uh, you're absolutely sure that you, you don't know Bunny Dollar? This I can guarantee. Oh, what a pity. He's really worlds of fun. Oh, yes, I can imagine. Well, what do you know? Uh, what's that? Hmm? Oh, uh, nothing. I, I just wanted an old friend over at the bar. See you later, Harris. Oh, I see. So I can see your point, old man. Well, hello, Ilsa. Uh, oh. It is Ilsa Schaefer, isn't it? Why, you're the yeah, one. That's right. Johnny Dollar, the one you shared a cab with back in Zurich. Oh, yes, of course. What a coincidence. Isn't it? Incidentally, Johnny, I want to thank you for turning my purse in. It was foolish of me to leave it in your cab. Just an oversight, huh? Well, yes, of course. I mean, you didn't by any chance leave it in the cab on purpose, huh? Well, of course not. Why would I do a thing like that? Oh, maybe so somebody else would think you passed something along to me in that cab, besides a kiss. Oh, that kiss. I suppose I shouldn't have been so impulsive. Oh, I didn't object to that. But I did object to a muscle man jumping me and acting like you had given me something. Oh? 
What was I supposed to have given you? You don't have any idea? No. Honestly, I don't. Okay. We'll let that ride for the time being. Mind if I ask what you're doing here at the club again? Oh, this is a favorite spot of mine. I like to ski. Oh. You don't seem convinced. I really am quite a good skier, Johnny. Are you? As a matter of fact, I plan to go skiing in the morning. Would you like to come with me? Well, now, that might be pretty interesting. Uh, just a minute. I'll go check with Otto, see if I can borrow some skis. Be right back. All right, Johnny. Ah, Herr Dollar. And how are enjoying your stay so far? Just fine, Otto, fine. Uh, look, about that girl over at the bar. Fräulein Schäfer. Oh, a most attractive young lady, no? A most attractive young lady, yes. Um, this seems to be a favorite spot of hers. I am very happy to hear that, Herr Dollar. I suppose she comes here often, huh? This is her first visit to the Kleibach Inn. You're sure about that? Of course. I would certainly remember a young lady like her. Yes, this is her first visit, but I hope it will not be her last. Don't count on it, Otto. So Elsa was lying about coming here often. That could mean she'd lied about a few other things, too, like leaving her purse in my cab accidentally. She might have been trying to make it look like she'd passed the stolen diamonds onto me and thus take the heat off herself and whoever she was working with. I remembered what Inspector Honiger had told me, that Sebastian's killer could be a woman. I went back to the bar. Did you arrange for the skis? Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm all set. Good. Tomorrow morning, then. All right, where? Well, I had in mind the North Slope, but uh, perhaps you would not like that. Why not? Some people consider it too dangerous. Oh, I don't think I should worry about the danger, do you? <laughs> After all, Elsa, I'll be in the best of hands. Thank you. I'm sure you'll take good care of me. I will certainly try to, Johnny. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, well, skiing's a strenuous sport, so is hunting. Put them together, and it's liable to kill you. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. This is Otto, the innkeeper. I have a telephone call for you from Police Inspector Honegger in Zurich. I will put him on. Go ahead. Hi, Inspector. Any line on Sebastian's killer? Uh, not yet, Herr Dollar. That also means no line on the stolen diamonds, huh? I do not know. You recall the picture postcard Sebastian gave you before his death? The picture of the Kleibach Inn? Sure. He said it was part of a key to the location of the diamonds. That's why I came up here to the inn. But I haven't found any sign of them. We have been watching Sebastian's apartment. This morning, the second part of the key arrived in his mailbox. Another postcard? Yes. I am sending it on to you. See what you can make of it. <sighs> Looks like we're in the middle of a game of some kind. Have you been able to locate the missing murder suspect, Ilse Schaefer? I've not only located her, in five minutes I'm going skiing with her. What? Herr Dollar, do you think that is wise for you? It's one way of finding out if she ties in. I just hope it doesn't turn out to be the hard way. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Global Casualty in Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Location, Clybox, Switzerland. Expense account continued. <music> Item 7, $3 American, rental on ski equipment. Ilsa Schaefer told me she'd come to Clybox to go skiing, and I wanted to make sure that was her reason. There'd been too many coincidences about her to suit me, First, the way she'd popped into my cab in Zurich, then popped out two blocks later, leaving her purse behind. Right after that, I'd been jumped by a strong arm who was sure Ilsa had passed the stolen diamonds to me. And now she turns up suddenly at the Kleibach Inn. I spotted her waiting for me at the ski lift. 
Come on, Johnny. You're late. In a skiing outfit, she could have passed for Miss Switzerland. But one nasty little thought kept coming into my brain, kept marring the picture. She could also be Sebastian's killer. We rode the lift up to the top and took off along the ridges. She skied like she was born to it. Easy, smooth, and graceful. It had been four years since I'd last been on skis, and as I struggled to keep up with her, I must have looked like a rusty snowplow. We worked our way out on the crest of one of the ridges. Let's stop here a moment. Well, that suits me fine. You winded? This is not exactly sea level. I just get used to it. You see, I really can ski, Johnny. Oh, that's an understatement. Do you have a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Here. Isn't it beautiful up here, Johnny? Yeah. You see that little dot way down there? That is the inn. A long way down. That's what I like about skiing. Everything is so remote, so far below. When you're up here, all that down there, it it just doesn't exist anymore. It's always there when you get back, though. (laughs) You, You are too practical, Johnny. But, you know, it's fun being with you. Thanks. I still can't get over it. What? Well, the coincidence that I should share your cab in Zurich and then run into you again at the Kleibach Inn. But I am glad. Aren't you? Can't say that I... Johnny! Must have come from that other ridge behind the rocks. (coughs) Closer. We're sitting ducks on this ridge. Quick! Down the left side of it. There is a shortcut. Let's go. Keep low, Elsa. Who could be shooting at us? We'll figure that out when we get out of range. (coughs) He's still right with us. We'll be out of sight in a moment. Could be a moment too late. There. We are past the shoulder. Yeah. Slope's pretty steep here. This is the quickest way. The shoulder of the ridge will keep us out of sight. Maybe. What do you mean? We get going much faster and we're going to take off. Hey, ahead of us, a cliff. Johnny, stop! What do you think I'm trying to do? Johnny, Johnny, watch out! Can't Johnny! Get... Oh, brother. Oh, Johnny. Four feet more and I... Oh, thank heaven. This was a real great route you picked, Ilsa. Oh, I... I can't tell you how sorry I Sorry am. I didn't go over the edge. Oh, of course not. I mean, I'm... I'm sorry that in the excitement, I forgot about the avalanche. Avalanche? Yes, several months ago. It took away part of the slope and left this sheer drop. Forgot about it, huh? Well, I... I just told you I did. I noticed you didn't have much trouble stopping in time. But I was behind you. Oh, yeah, that's just where you were, behind me. What are you trying to say, Johnny? Just that this is one coincidence too many, Ilsa. We just happen to stop on the top of the ridge right where I make a grade-A target. Then you just happen to forget there's a sheer drop on this shortcut you got me to take. But I explained Come on, we're going back to the inn. The fire feels good, doesn't it? Johnny, Johnny, what is it? What's the matter? All those things you said up on the ridge... I'm waiting, Elsa. Waiting for what? For you to open up and tell me what this is all about and how you fit into the deal. Deal? Oh, cut it out, will you? You didn't just happen to share my cab back in Zurich. The whole thing was rigged so it would look like you passed those stolen diamonds along to me. Stolen? Johnny, I don't know anything about stolen diamonds. I suppose you also don't know anything about a man named Sebastian. Yes, I know Sebastian. What has he got to do with... about his murder? Murder? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Why, why, I I can't believe it. Sebastian did. Yeah, and you've already admitted you knew Sebastian. Now, let's have the rest of the story, straight. Oh, well, Sebastian was a friend of mine. Friend? Nothing more. He had asked me to share your cab at the airport and to leave my purse in it. Why did he want you to do that? I don't know. He, well, he said he was in some kind of trouble and needed help. He said if I would do that, it would help him. Ilsa, you'll have to do better than that. But I am telling you the truth. No, you... Hey, wait a minute. You claim you didn't know what kind of trouble Sebastian was in? No, he didn't tell me. You also claim you don't know anything about the diamonds, $100,000 worth? What? 
I read about that in the newspapers, but... Oh, wait a moment. Are you saying that Sebastian was involved in it? Up to his ears. I'm sorry to hear that, Johnny. But you must believe me. I did not know anything about it. You're either telling the truth or you're a whale of an actress, Dilsa. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. But about that taxi cab in Zurich, I, I don't understand. Sebastian was trying to double-cross the rest of the outfit by negotiating with me for the return of the diamonds. But apparently there was another outfit after the diamonds. He wanted to make it look to them like he'd passed the diamonds along oh. to take the heat off. You said a man attacked you after I had left your cab. Yeah. He obviously thought you'd slip me the diamonds. Oh. So Sebastian was setting me up as a patsy on the one hand and negotiating with me on the other. Who could have killed him? Good question. Could be the outfit trying to grab the stones. Or Sebastian's own crowd found out he was trying to sell them out. And the person who shot at us up on the Same ridge? two possibilities. Which reminds me, you still haven't explained how you happened to come up here to the Kleibach Inn. Oh. Well, Sebastian told me he had unfinished business in Zurich, and he would meet me here in a few days, and we would go skiing. I see. Tell me, did you know any of Sebastian's friends? One or two, slightly. Was one of them big and powerful, thick features, almost bald? Mm, no. Why? Well, he's the one who jumped me in the hotel lobby after my cab ride with you. Oh, no, no. I, I am certain I would remember him the way you describe him. Oh, there was a man Sebastian spent a great deal of time with, but he was short and stocky with very thick neck. Well, that fits the description of one of the men in the robbery at the Zurich airport. Do you know his name? Why, um, Bruner, I think it was. Could it have been Gruner? Yes, yes, Gruner. The man who sent the postcard to Sebastian. Yeah, that ties in all right. Postcard? Oh, I'll skip that. Was one of Sebastian's friends an Englishman? Mm, not that I know of. Why? Well, a fellow named Jeffrey Harris here at the hotel has been trying to strike up an acquaintance with me. Claims he thought I was old Bunny Dollar, a friend of his from London. Oh, well. Johnny, if you'll excuse me, I, I'm very tired and upset about this news of Sebastian. I, I think I'll go to my room. Yeah, okay, Elsa. If there's anything more I can do... Don't worry. You. I'll let you know. All right. I, I'll see you later. Herr Dollar? Hmm. Oh, Otto. Did you enjoy your skiing? Well, let's say it was real interesting. Got a question for you, Otto. Huh? As a man of experience, how do you tell if a woman is lying? <laughs> okay, Herr Dollar. As an innkeeper, I learned long ago that one listens to a woman, agrees with her, smiles politely, keeps his eyes open, and believes what he wishes about her. Yeah, well, I guess that's as good advice as any. Uh, Herr Dollar, this letter arrived for you from Zurich by special messenger while you were... Oh, yeah, I was expecting it. Thanks, Otto. One more thing. Yeah? Did anybody else go skiing this morning? From the inn? No. I see. But the Englishman... Jeffrey Harris? What about him? He likes to climb the rocks. He went out for a while. Climbing rocks, huh? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Jeffrey Harris could be my boy, all right. But at the moment, I was more interested in the contents of the envelope Police Inspector Honiger had sent me from Zurich. I tore it open and examined the postcard inside. Expense item eight, two and a half, long distance call to Zurich and Honiger. You received the postcard, Herr Dollar? Yeah, from Gruner to Sebastian, a picture of a chalet on the side of a mountain. You say this card arrived in Sebastian's mailbox? This morning. Apparently, Gruner is unaware of Sebastian's death. Uh, what do you make of the card? Well, the chalet in the picture is sort of a small halfway house for skiers. Is it attended? No, empty most of the time. Herr Dollar, possibly the first postcard of the inn was simply for the purpose of guiding Sebastian to Kleibach. The second is perhaps a picture of the actual location of the diamonds. That's what I'm going up there to find out. The trail up the mountain started in back of the inn. I worked my way up the ridge slowly, keeping an eye on every clump of rock, just in case my friend with the rifle was still on the prowl. Near the crest, I stopped a breath. Suddenly, I spotted something moving far down the slope below me. Someone was descending from rock to rock, almost down to the inn. It was too far to tell for sure, but it looked like the Englishman, Jeffrey Harris. I started my climb again. Ten minutes later, I reached the halfway house, the place on the postcard. It was small, just a shelter, and there was no sign of life. 
inside, the place was in a shambles, completely torn about. If this had been the hiding place of the stolen diamonds, somebody had sure beat me to it. Johnny Dollar. Inspector Hardiger of the Zurich Police, Herr Dollar. Hi, Inspector. Where are you? Downstairs in the lobby of the inn. I came up from Zurich to see if that picture postcard I sent you was of help in locating the stolen diamonds. Afraid not, Inspector. I located the chalet on the postcard, all right. It's sort of a shelter for skiers up on a ridge. Well? Well, when I got there, the place had been turned upside down. If the diamonds were hidden there, somebody sure beat me to it. I see. So it looks like we're at a dead end. Perhaps not. What do you mean? You recall that in Zurich, a large man attacked you thinking that you had the diamonds? Recall it. I've still got the lumps to prove it. What about him? A man answering that description bought a railroad ticket here to Kleibach last night. Oh? We have reason to believe that he is somewhere here in the village now. That could mean that the diamonds that he and you are looking for are here after all. I'll be right down, Inspector. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Global Casualty in Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Location, Clybox, Switzerland. Expense account continued. Item 9, 70 cents. One pot of coffee for Inspector Honiger and myself at the Clybox Inn. Ah, most perplexing case, Herr Dollar. A skillfully timed robbery of the uncut diamonds at the Zurich airport last week, and then these puzzling postcards supposedly giving the location of the diamonds. Yeah, they've got to be the key, Inspector. If we can only figure them out. Look, we know now that Sebastian was in on the robbery and was trying to negotiate secretly for the return of the stones. Yeah, and he told you before he was murdered that the postcard he gave you was a part of the key to the location of the diamonds. That's right. It was signed by a man named Gruner, and according to Ilsa Schaefer, Gruner was a friend of Sebastian's. Her description of Gruner matches one of the men in the robbery at the airport. And what of this young lady, Ilse Schaefer? What do you make of her? Well, that's a, a good question, Inspector. I, I wish I knew the answer. I hope she's in the clear. Hope? Oh, oh I see. All right, so I'm normal. Uh, yeah, she is a very attractive young lady. But there is also the chance that she is involved... That she killed Sebastian. I know. I know. She could be involved or she could be innocent. It's a 50-50 proposition, I guess. Pay your money and take your choice. More coffee, Inspector? Please. Thank you. Uh, what is her story? Well, I finally got her to admit she didn't share my cab in Zurich and leave her purse in it just by coincidence. It was Sebastian's idea to make it look like she'd passed something along to me. But why would Sebastian wish to make it appear that you had the diamonds if he was trying to negotiate with you for their return? That does not make sense. Actually, I think it does, Inspector. It could go together this way. After the robbery, the gang split up. Gruner was to hide the diamonds, then get word to Sebastian as to their location. Of this much, we are fairly certain. Okay, okay. But now, Sebastian gets the bright idea of double-crossing his buddies. He gets in touch with the insurance company I represent, and they send me to Zurich to negotiate with him. I still do not... In the meantime, though, another outfit has moved into the picture and is trying to grab the stones from Sebastian and his boys. Yeah. Yeah, that would explain many things. Sure, sure it would. That's why he rigged that deal with Ilsa in my taxi cab to make it look to the other outfit like I had the stones. That would take them off his neck for a while. Yeah, he was playing me for a patsy. But I've got to admit, it was a pretty fair scheme. Then later, Sebastian contacts you and gives you the first postcard. Mm -hmm. He tells you it is part of the key to the location of the diamonds. That's right. But Sebastian didn't move fast enough, so he wound up dead. But uh, his confederate Gruner sent him a second card. Oh, probably mail before Sebastian was killed. It is possible. Now... The first postcard is a picture of this Kleibach Inn. Yeah, and according to Watto, the innkeeper, it's not the best picture of the inn. I asked him about Gruner. He said he thought he'd heard the name somewhere, but that Gruner hadn't been a guest here. Perhaps he is down in the village. Well, I'm going to check that today. But if the diamonds are in the village, why the postcard of the inn? And why the second postcard of the ski hut on the ridge? 
Ach, I do not know. Is there anybody here at the inn that you suspect of being an accomplice of Gruner and Sebastian? Ilsa Schaefer, for one. She claims Sebastian told her he'd meet her here in a few days for some skiing. I see. Anyone else? An Englishman named Jeffrey Harris. He seems pretty interested in me. Claims he thought I was a friend of his from London. He might be telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, he might be. But I found out he likes to climb mountains. And he was up there somewhere this morning when Ilsa and I were skiing and got shot at. Do you think Fräulein Schaefer could have maneuvered you into that position? Well, if she did, she had a lot of confidence in the marksmanship of her buddy in the rocks. And you told me she suggested a route of escape which ended suddenly at a, a cliff. Which I almost went off of. Yeah, yeah, Inspector, I hate to say it, but she could be the one. And I've got to find out one way or the other. Which means I'm going to stick pretty close to her for the time being. I gather that prospect is not entirely unpleasant to you. But be careful, Herr Dollar. She could be dangerous. So could Jeffrey Harris. On my way to the ski hut this afternoon, I spotted him down the mountain from me. And the ski hut had been torn apart. Yeah. If the diamonds were there, they're gone now. And Harris could be the boy who beat me to them. If he or anybody attempts to leave Kleibach, one of my men at the railroad station will report it. Well, I must be getting back to Zurich, Herr Dollar. Who knows? Perhaps these postcards are just decoys. And the stones are still in Zurich? No. No, I'd bet my bottom dollar they're here in Kleibach somewhere. If I could only figure out the meaning of those postcards. Yeah. Otherwise, why would the man who attacked you in Zurich have come here? Well, he must be hiding out in the village somewhere. Well, perhaps I can turn up something else of help in Zurich. Right now, Inspector, anything would be of help, believe me. After Inspector Honiger left, I studied the postcards again, but I got nowhere. One of the inn, the other the ski hut. What did they mean? I went out on the balcony outside my room and looked up at the mountains. But I couldn't see the ski hut from there. A ridge was in the way. I did see something else, though. Three rooms down the balcony, Jeffrey Harris's French doors were open. His room was empty. So I decided to have a look. I wasn't sure just what I was looking for. Something, anything that would indicate whether or not Harris was involved in the whole thing. I worked my way to the closet, turning up one big nothing. His clothes were hung neatly in place, and in one corner was stacked some climbing gear. I reached around behind it, and my hand touched metal. I pulled it into view. A rifle with a telescopic sight. I sniffed at the barrel. The gun had been fired recently. Ah, good evening, Herr Dollar. Hello, Otto. Look. Have you seen Jeffrey Harris lately? The Englishman? Not since late afternoon. All day long he was out climbing the mountain. Yeah, I know. He no sooner got back than he went out again. Before dinner. And it was a good dinner tonight, too. Any idea where he went? None. Could be in the village. Look, tell me something. When he arrived here at your inn, did he have a gun case in his luggage? He had a lot of climbing equipment, but I did not notice a gun case. Well, he could have taken it apart and packed it in his suitcase. Why do you ask, Herr Dollar? Hmm. Oh, skip it. I'll see you later, Otto. Johnny. Oh. Hello, Elsa. I've been looking for you. Yeah? Have you been able to find out who are shooting at us up on the ridge this morning? I'm not sure. Yet. You still do not trust me, do you? I don't know, Elsa. What can I do to prove to you that I am not involved? In what? Anything. The diamond robbery, the murder of Sebastian, the attempt on your life this morning. I... I like you, Johnny. I don't want you thinking such things about me. Look, let's, uh, let's talk about it later on. Why not now? I have to go into the village. Well, perhaps I could go with you, Johnny. Do you mind? No. Matter of fact, that might be a good idea. Nice in the village tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Quiet, too. You seem to, to be looking for something, Johnny. For someone, Elsa. Who? The Englishman, Jeffrey Harris. Oh? You told me you'd never seen him before you came here to Kleibach. That is right. Then he wasn't a friend of Sebastian's. Oh, not as far as I know. 
Well, an hour ago, in Harris's room, I found a rifle with a telescopic sight. You mean that Harris is the one who shot at you this morning? Otto, the innkeeper, told me Harris went mountain climbing today. I saw him on his way down late this afternoon. But he isn't at the inn now. You think he's down here in the village? Maybe. That's why... What's the matter? Hold it, Elsa. Well, well. Looks like maybe the village isn't so quiet after all. What do you mean? I think somebody's following us. What? Come on, I'll start walking you. Yeah. Where? Across the street and back away in the shadows. Oh, what are you going to do, John? Figure out a way. Wait a minute. That alley up ahead will turn into it. Oh, John. Don't turn your head, Elsa. Okay, into the alley now. Good. He can't see us here. Who do you think it is? I don't know. Bruner, Jeffrey, Harris, even the guy who jumped me back in Zurich thinking I had the diamonds. Keep going. You think he'll come into this alley? That's what I'm hoping. All right, now here we are. The doorway here will do very nicely. Look, you'll see. You keep going down the alley. Cut across to the next street and go back to the inn. But what are you going to do? Wait for him. Go on now, go on. No, Johnny. Look, you do as I... I want to stay with you. Don't be silly. It could get a little rough around here all of a sudden. Uh, There's nothing you can do here, Elsa. So do what I tell you. Now get moving. Now. She looked at me a moment, then went down the alley and out of sight. A couple of minutes went by. Nothing. Then I heard steps. He was approaching the alley, whoever he was. Now he was at the entrance. I pressed back into the doorway. A few more feet. Wait a minute. He decided not to bite. I edged out of the doorway and back to the mouth of the alley. Then I stuck my head around the corner. Nobody. He must have ducked into a building or down the street. It sounded like Ilsa from the next street. I cut through the alley. Then I spotted a couple of people in front of a small hotel down the street. They were jabbering excitedly. There was a man crumpled up on the ground. Ilsa saw me and ran over. Johnny! Oh, Johnny! What's the matter, Ilsa? He fell out of the upstairs window, almost in front of me. Who is it? It's, it's Sebastian's friend, Gruner. Gruner. The guy who'd been writing postcards to Sebastian. Gruner, the only man in the world who knew where the diamonds were hidden. My one lead, dead. Johnny Dollar. This is Otto, the innkeeper, Herr Dollar. Oh, good. I was away from the desk for a few minutes and just received the message that you called. Look, Otto, I'm at the little hotel down in the village. You're not planning to move out of the Kleibach Inn, I hope. No, no, listen. I want you to do me a favor. Of course. Have you seen Jeffrey Harris? The English gentleman? No. Then keep a sharp eye out for him. Oh. Yeah, and the minute he gets back to the inn, call me. But don't let him know you're calling me. Whatever you say, Herr Dollar. But is something wrong? Plenty. This man named Gruner I've been looking for. You have found him? I've found him, all right. Dead. And it looks like his killer is here at this hotel. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Clybox, Switzerland. To the Home Office Global Casualty, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the picture postcard matter. Expense account continued. The murder of Gruner meant that I had lost the one solid lead I had on the whole case. Unless, of course, I could round up whoever put him away. Item 10, one dollar to the desk clerk for watching the rear entrance of the hotel in case the killer should try to get out that way. Well, what are you going to do, Johnny? Go upstairs and take a look. I'm coming with you. No, no, stay here. I won't. I'm coming with you. All right, I don't have time to argue. Now, tell me again just what happened, Elsa. Uh, You realized we were being followed along the street. You decided to wait in that alley, and I was to cut through to this street and go back to the inn. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Well, when I got to the street, I heard a man cry out. Then I saw Gruner fall from an upstairs window. He was dead. He fell from a corner room? Yes. Well, that would be this door over here. Okay. Get back against the wall, Elsa. All right. Be careful, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Empty. Maybe one of the other rooms, Johnny. Yeah. Hey, hey. Somebody just locked up. That was down the hall. Yeah, come on. That room at the end. Get back, Elsa. Gone. The window. Yeah. 
Oh, great. A fire escape. Uh Uh-oh. You see someone, Just a flash as he disappeared around the corner. Could you recognize him? There wasn't much light, but it looked like the big boy who jumped me back in Zurich. Then it was he who killed Gruner. Could be. And Gruner was my last lead to those stolen diamonds. You think... That man who got away now has them? I don't know. If he does and tries to leave town, Inspector Honiger's man will pick him up at the railroad station. Well, let's go back to the inn. We did, but only because it meant being someplace where I could quietly sit down and think, try to put together and make sense out of what meager information I had. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I was starving. More coffee, Johnny? Hmm? No, no thanks, no. What's the matter, Johnny? Oh, what's the matter is I'm beat. The stolen diamonds. The stolen diamonds. Unless I can figure out the meaning of those picture postcards Gruner sent to Sebastian, I'm licked. And so far I've drawn nothing but big blanks on them. Postcard? You didn't say anything to me about postcards. I know, Elsa. Well, look, you may as well know it. Right now, you're about my last hope. Uh You claim you weren't involved in any of this, that you want to help me. Oh, yes, Johnny, and I mean it. Okay, here's your chance to prove it. How? Take a look at these postcards. They're all addressed to your dead pal, Sebastian. Mm -hmm. Sent to him by Gruner. That's right. A picture of the Clyback in here and a picture of the ski hut on the ridge. Do they mean anything to you? Well, they are staying here at the inn and I have seen the ski hut on the ridge. Beyond that, nothing. You're sure? Yes. What is it all about, Johnny? The postcards, I mean. Sebastian and Gruner were together in the diamond robbery back in Zurich. Then they split up. Gruner hid the diamonds and sent these postcards to Sebastian. They're supposed to be the key to the location of the diamonds. And now both Sebastian and Gruner are dead. Which means that if I can't figure out this key, I'll probably never recover those stones. You told me this morning you thought there were others after the diamonds. Yeah, and they probably knocked off Sebastian and Gruner trying to get them. These postcards, the inn and the ski hut. Have you searched this inn? As well as I could. And the ski hut? When I got there, the place had been ransacked. Somebody beat me to it. I saw Jeffrey Harris in the vicinity on my way up to the hut. The Englishman? Yeah. He could be my boy. Maybe whoever knocked off Gruner in the village was working for him. Maybe Mr. Harris already has the diamonds in. I hope to find out if and when he comes back here to the inn. I somehow doubt that he's found them, though. They went after Gruner after the ski hut was ransacked. And that would indicate they are still looking for them. Yes. The inn and the ski hut. Wait, Johnny. Perhaps the diamonds are somewhere on a line between the two places. I thought of that, but it doesn't work. You can't see the ski hut from here at the inn. A ridge cuts it off. And where on a line between the two? They're about five miles apart. I wonder if... Hold it, Elsa. What is it? Jeffrey Harris, just coming in. See you later, Elsa. Well, 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 it's the dollar chap. Yeah, that's right, Harris. The dollar chap. Enjoying your stay at Clyback, old man? Well, let's say it's been interesting. Delightful place, really. I'm a bit of a mountain climber, you know. I yeah, think. I know. Oh, you do? Oh, I didn't think my reputation had spread that much. Oh, I'm really just an amateur, but it's great fun. You did some climbing today, I believe. Yes, matter of fact, I did. Splendid place of rock up there. It gave me quite a workout. And you were down in the village this evening? Oh, yes. I say, old chap, you, you seem to be rather an inquisitive sort. Why all the questions, huh? Well, this morning I got shot at up on the ridge. What's that? This evening a man was murdered in the village. Both times you were in the vicinity. Oh, oh, now, look here, Dollar. Let's not be absurd, right? I'm sorry that someone was potting away at you this morning, but I assure you I had nothing to do with it, and I didn't even know about the murder in the village. Plus the fact you've been pretty interested in me ever since I arrived here at the inn. Yes, but I've explained all that. I thought at first that you might be my old friend Bunny Dollar from London. Look, let's quit talking about old Bunny Dollar and start talking about that rifle of yours with a telescopic sight. (laughs) We don't be ridiculous, old boy. I don't have any rifle. Well, I just happened to have found one in your closet today. I say, you are a snooper, aren't you? But you must have gotten to the wrong closet. I tell you, I don't own a rifle. It was there, all right, and it was your closet. Well, then somebody left it there by mistake. Now, look here, Dollar. I haven't the slightest idea what you're driving at, but I assure you, I am in no way involved. And I must say, I don't care for your attitude or behavior. Hey, to think I had you confused with old Bunny. Well, you're not in the least like him. They're prowling in my closet. I guess I drew a blank there. Uh, Elsa... Where did you... Hey, Dollar. How oh, Otto. Where did Elsa go? Why, I do not know. She was sitting there a few minutes ago. Perhaps she went up to her room. Yeah. Hey, Dollar, this man you were looking for, 
Gruner. I'm not looking for him anymore, Otto. Like I told you over the phone, he got himself killed in the village this evening. I know. And that is what made me think you might be interested in this. Oh, hey, another postcard. Where'd you get it? It arrived today. It was addressed to the man called Sebastian in care of my inn. That means Gruner didn't know Sebastian was dead. Hey, hey, this could be the missing part of the key. Key? A picture of the village square. Does that mean something to you, Herr Dollar? I'm sure it means something, all right. But I'm not sure what. I went to my room and put the three postcards side by side. The inn, the ski hut on the ridge, and the village square. The trouble was I couldn't be sure this was all there was to the key. Maybe Gruner had planned to send more cards, but he wouldn't be sending any now. Yeah. Yeah, from any point of view, I was getting nowhere. Then I stopped cold. Point of view. I looked at the cards again. You couldn't see the ski hut from the inn, and you couldn't see the inn from the village. But maybe, just maybe, there was some point from which you could see all three. I went downstairs and outside. It was a moonlight night. I started walking slowly toward the village, keeping the inn in sight behind me. Finally, I came to a point in the road where I could see both the inn and the village square in the distance. But I still couldn't see the ski hut. There was a ridge in the way. I started cutting across a field. It looked like a little deserted farm. A shed loomed up in front of me, a small, broken-down barn. And then, just as I got to the barn, the ski hut on the ridge came into view. I stopped and checked. Yeah? Yeah, I could see the inn, the village square, and the ski hut. And this was the one point from which the scenes on all three postcards were visible. This had to be it. I went inside. The barn was empty except for some straw in one corner. I ran my hands through it. And I pulled out a leather case. The moonlight streaming through the broken roof told me I finally found the uncut diamonds. Wait a minute. Somebody outside. I froze against the wall in the shadow. He came in. I let him get close. Then I dove at him. I gave him a couple so the midsection and it crumpled. I dragged him to his feet. No, that's the off. Well, my old friend who jumped me back in Zurich. Who are you? Come on. No, no, don't. No, I, I am Anton. Your outfit was trying to get the diamonds away from Sebastian's boys, huh? Yes. When you jumped me in Zurich, you thought I had them. Then you followed me here to Kleibach. And you killed Gruner trying to make him talk. Okay, who are you working for? Spell it. No, nobody. I am working alone. Don't give me that. You haven't the brains to mastermind a deal like this. Now, who's the boss? I can't tell you. Open up, Anton. Oh. Start talking. That is enough, Herr Dollar. What? Otto. Stand very still. Well, so the little innkeeper is Anton's boss. You stupid fool, Anton. Yeah, well, what could I do, Otto? I, I didn't know he had had me approaching. One blunder after another. But I would... I think I get it now, Otto. It was you who shot at me up at the ridge this morning. Then you planted the rifle in the Englishman's room. I realized after I had missed that perhaps it was just as well, Dollar. Sure, sure. You realized I might be able to help you. You couldn't figure out the location of the stones, although you had one of the postcards. But you knew I had the other two and might be able to figure out the three of them. Why not? So you gave me the third card, hoping I'd lead you to the diamonds. Which you very obligingly did. Give me the diamonds, Dollar. I will take them. Stand back, Anton. What? Huh? But Otto... Sure. You don't think he's really going to split with you, do you, Anton? What do you mean? Otto... Stay where you are, Anton. You have served your purpose. After all I have done for you. What? You stand back! Anton started for Otto, who took his eyes off for a second. That's what I was waiting for. I dove at him just as his gun went off. Yeah. Anton crumpled, and after a fist in his face, ah. Otto did likewise. I knelt down and picked up his gun. Don't all right, Otto. Just hold it where you are. But my shoulder, I'm hurt. Don't worry, Anton. Uh. There's enough of you left to talk to the police. And you know... I got a hunch you're going to be a real cooperative witness. Expense account, 14th and final item, $678.50, transportation and incidentals home. Total expenses, $1,723 even. Remarks? Otto and Anton were turned over to police inspector Honiger. The diamonds are in safekeeping. About Otto. Well, greed is one of the seven deadly sins. It sure turned out to be the deadliest one for Otto. How about Elsa? Well, uh, please consider me available for any future assignments in Switzerland. End of report. Yours truly, 
Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, there's uranium, they say, in the Arizona hills. There's also a killer with three victims behind him. And he's looking for another. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Lucille Meredith, Victor Perrin, Forrest Lewis, Stan Jones, and Ben Wright. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>